Experiment 9, Saponification. All right, so here we have 6.31 grams of lard, and we've already added the boiling chips. And now we're going to add 6 molar sodium hydroxide. And we're also adding 95% ethanol. And now we're going to place this in the boiling water bath for 30 to 35 minutes. Alright, so periodically we want to make sure that we keep the reaction flask fixed. So you can just do that with crucible tongs and just swirl the flask. And it's also important not to let this dry out. So we're going to be topping off the mixture with half ethanol, half DI water. And then we're just going to continue heating it. So we have the soap in the ice bath, and we're going to add 50 milliliters of saturated sodium chloride solution. So there you can see the soap, after we agitate it, it has floated up to the top. And we're going to decant the liquid off as best we can so we can isolate the soap. So now we're going to decant the sodium chloride solution in leftover water and trying to keep as much solid soap in the flask as possible. So now we're going to take some more of the saturated um, sodium chloride solution that's been sitting in the ice bath still and do the same process again to make sure we try to get off all of the, um, the glycerol through the salting out process. All right, so now we're going to wash the soap with 20 mils of cold water. And then decant that rinse into the waste beaker. So now we're going to transfer the soap from the flask onto a paper towel and dry it out. Removing the boiling chips so they don't add into the mass when we weigh it later. Okay, so we've dried out the soap. We took the mass of it, which is 9.92 grams of our made soap. And this is uh, what most of it looks like at the end of it, of the soap that we made. Now I've taken about one gram of that and dissolved it in about 50 milliliters of water. And I'm taking about one gram of the ivory soap, which is our control soap that we have, and that I've dissolved also in another 50, milli uh, 50 milliliters of water. So now what I'm going to do is the foam test. And so we're going to take one full pipette of our ivory soap, the control soap, and put that into a medium beaker. So I'll pull up one full pipette sample of that. And then I'm going to add three full pipettes of just distilled water, which is what I have here in this graduated cylinder, and add that to my medium-sized beaker. So 
so that's three. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to shake this vigorously while holding my finger over the top and seeing what kind of foam formation that we get. And so that's what we have with our control soap. Now I'm gonna do the exact same thing with the made soap that we have. So I'm gonna take one full pipette of the soap that we made, that solution, and then again, three pipettes full of just regular DI water. I'm gonna take that one and shake that up as well. You can see our soap obviously is not as well dissolved. You can see a lot of particulates going, but the foam gives us maybe about the same height as our other one as well. So not a huge difference on foam test. This one settled down a bit as it, as it rested, but not a huge difference in our foam test between our control soap and our made soap. Now we're gonna be looking at the alkalinity test. So here I have my ivory soap, my control soap, and I've put 10 milliliters of my solution into it and then filled it until with DI water until it got to 50 milliliters. And I did the same thing with my sample soap or the made soap that we have. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add five drops of the phenolphthalein, and that's gonna be our pH indicator. So you can see with the maid soap that we have that there is a slight base um, value for our pH or slightly alkaline and that's what we get in that pink color. The ivory soap, however, um, because it is an older soap that's been processed and ready for market, that one does not have that alkalinity and so it is neutral and so we don't have any color um, as part of that. So its titration is complete. We didn't have to add any hydrochloric acid in order to neutralize the ivory soap of the control. But now what we're gonna do is try to neutralize our um, sample or our made soap. And we're gonna be doing that by adding one drop at a time of our hydrochloric acid, the 0.2 molar hydrochloric acid, and then seeing how many drops it takes to get this pink color to disappear. So that's one drop. I'm gonna swirl in between, still pink. There's another drop, swirl in between. Here we'll do a third drop. We still have just a slight amount of pink color left in our solutions. We're getting close to that titration. Swirl that. And it's gone clear. Let's see if it stays clear or if it goes back to pink. Yep, that looks good to me. So now we've got them both as clear and so we no longer have that alkalinity, now it is neutralized. And so remember there's a conversion in your um, notebook that says that for every 20 drops, that's equal to one milliliter. So you wanna convert the number of drops we used into milliliters and record that for your hydrochloric acid, how much of that was needed to neutralize our sample soap solution. So last thing we'll look at is the Tyndall effect. And so what I'm gonna be doing is using a laser pointer and seeing how it interacts with our solutions. So first one we'll look at is our ivory or our control soap. So we're gonna pass the light beam through it. And you'll see that it actually stops and it disperses into the solution itself. So we're not getting the light to pass through the solution 
as we have it there. So we have no light passing through to the other side and we can't see the laser pointer on the other end of it. We're going to go ahead and do the same thing for our made soap solution, so our sample. This one again, we have a little bit of pass through, it's not quite as cloudy and doesn't disperse as well, so there's a little bit of pass through, you can see it coming out the other end. For the most part it does disperse within the solution. And then to compare, here we have just some um, of our sodium chloride solution that we had used earlier on when we were desalting it. And this one you can see, of course, it passes directly through. You can see the, the laser on the other side on my hand very clearly and does not disperse in the solution at all. So you'll notice that we didn't do the hard water test for our experiment. This is because it wasn't working well in the lab and so we're going to skip that part from your procedure and you won't be required to record any data about that. Thank you for watching Experiment 9, Saponification. You can now complete your procedure quiz.